Hello, welcome to the truth. The church has warned against messianic, bearded, long-haired, hippie people speaking out and sticking up for the poor. A dangerous issue and the church is no place for it. Bishops in the Church of England are appealing to Christians to take part in politics. The bishops are aware that voices in British society, notably comedian Russell Brand, have been arguing that voting is pointless. It's an interesting story that's been widely reported as the church criticising me for encouraging voter apathy. Encouraging apathy is a really weird concept in itself. Come on! Let's be apathetic! Mm. Brilliant! But it's a really interesting piece of media mangling because that's not the main thing that the church said. The main thing that the church did was criticise Britain's political culture. All politicians of all parties have sterile arguments, said the church, and are they themselves encouraging voter apathy and making by making voters cynical in the run-up to the general election? What's interesting about this is it's an unprecedented intervention by the church and what they're actually criticising is political culture. They've said, our democracy is failing, we need a fresh moral vision of the kind of country we want to be. They're actually trying to address the alienation and sadness that a lot of us feel. What the bishops are trying to say in this letter is that what this country needs now is a much fresher and more visionary approach to politics. One that tries to pass power back towards local communities and people and families. The other interesting things in the church statement was a condemnation of Trident Missile. There's no way that Jesus in any form would be Yes, you're right, we do need some form of nuclear deterrent. They condemned the widening inequality in Britain and supported the living wage. There's a warning of an ugly undercurrent of racism. So, like, really what the church is identifying as an enemy is a political culture that's completely detached from principles of community and interconnectedness, a culture that fates the individual so that we're all just pocketed and atomised and have no sense of what we are as a country, what we are as a community. We're concerned, as we know many others are, with a sort of alienation really from the whole political process. It's been shown in low turnouts in recent elections and we think that's uh, dangerous really for our country. This story is being reported as the church condemns Russell Brand, but what this story actually is is the church condemns the government. Why does the church condemn the government? Because the government works only for big business and does nothing to create a cohesive society. And the church on the other hand is a very innovative in backing charities and creating food banks and looking after the homeless. It's exactly the kind of community action that's required. I got this teddy bear from a food bank that I went to. Probably this should have been given to a child. But it's not only Christian charities, there are Muslim charities like Muslim Aid and Islamic Relief Fund UK. Religion and spirituality, in fact, provide the community love, compassion, tolerance, to togetherness. These kind of values, invisible values that can't be monetized and don't present us all as a group of individuals competing with one another for limited resources. We're concerned about both that alienation but also the way we might be becoming divided from each other. We really want to call church people to look at that. The reason the, the media is focusing on the, the or oh, church condemns Russell Brand as opposed to church condemns government is because there are a lot of chilling facts that are difficult to deal with. Poverty in the UK is at a 30 year high. 900,000 people were given emergency food last year by organisations like Christian Food Bank set up by organisations like the Trussell Trust, the Christian organisation. The number of food bank users tripled last year. Two new food banks open every week. A coalition of anti-poverty charities claim the UK is breaching international law by violating the human right to food. This unprecedented intervention by the church into the political conversation is because our government is ineffective and is making things worse for poor people, better for rich people, and there's no feasible opposition and no political system that can bring about real change. I hope that we will from the Church of England, perhaps from the House of Bishops, uh, have a short statement in the run-up to the election indicating some of the areas that we think might be important for voters to focus on. Not telling people how to vote but saying maybe here are some of the issues that you should bear in mind. And that is the important thing. Record inequality, record poverty. Which parties are going to address it? And if those parties do address it, how is our political system going to demonstrate it and represent it. He was also part of this campaign last year where 27 Church of England bishops wrote an open letter saying that changes to benefits were forcing people to use food banks. It's like the church has already accepted that the government aren't doing anything because they're having to address these problems themselves by setting up food trusts. It was organised by this Manchester based charity called Church Action on Poverty and was criticised by ministers who said the campaign was too political. What it implies is that there's a need like in Greece and 
began in Spain for a new type of politics, for a new type of political alliances, for smaller groups to come together and be represented, for a devolution of power and for communities to take control back, to look after their own poor, to look after each other, to take back these resources. Is it alright for the church to have a view on the deficit, on the NHS? I prefer they didn't. Let them keep the moral code and, and, and look after the uh, social side of their life, of the people who go to church. The fact is you can't divorce politics from morality and spirituality. We've seen what happens when you do that. What's happening now is what happens when you take morality and spirituality out of the process. You just behave individualistically, selfishly, greedily, make alliances with corporations that support your own interests and perhaps what job you'll do after you're in government and cut back on welfare. Christian ideas like sharing, helping and loving fall by the wayside. You need more spirituality in government, not less. I think there's so many religions in this country at the moment, it's very difficult to say which should get involved. Right, there's too many religions. There's the Zarathustrans over here, there's the Hare Krishnas over there, there's all different types of Christians. Which one should get involved? How about people that believe there's no point in anything and you should might as well just be really greedy and evil? Put them in charge. On uh, bishops and politics, I'm always keen for anyone to intervene in politics. You're not keen for anyone to intervene in politics. You're keen for a small group of people to have total domination. People can say stuff on the sidelines if you like, but we won't be doing anything about it. I think it's good we want to have a political debate in our country. But let's look at what we're doing to help people who are in work in our country. Not very much, because half of them are dirt poor. And I would say to the bishops, I hope they would welcome that, because work does bring dignity, it does bring self-reliance, it does enable people to provide for their families, it creates a stronger society. Half of people in work are living in poverty, so that whole argument of laziness that David Cameron uses here is completely bogus. Working people are in poverty because all of the resources and money are being retained by the top 1%. And a welfare system that pays people to stay idle when they could work, that is not uh, the sign of a strong economy or a strong or good society. How did David Cameron manage to mangle that argument round to it? I think what the church was trying to say is we should get rid of all welfare. I think the key message of Christianity is disabled people, poor people, Fuck off! The church is always going to have a view on moral issues. How far they get involved in day-to-day -day politics, well, that's a matter of personal taste. Me and the church are saying the same thing. Politics is broken. We need to create a new politics, new political alliances that goes way beyond voting and into direct action. Helping people where we see that the help is required. Ignoring and imposing these systems when necessary. What we need to do is engage ourselves spiritually, whether that's from an atheistic perspective, a Muslim perspective or a Christian perspective, to challenge these institutions that operate only on behalf of one another and are not interested in truly helping us. The system itself is broken. There's nothing that it can do. It's the same as walking into McDonald's. It don't matter if you have a burger or a salad, McDonald's ain't changing. That's some true news. Subscribe here. Nose is a tool that is abused to fool you and to leave you scared and confused. Trues is like the news. If the news was true, I want some trues. Let's have some trues.